I'm Mike Costello, and I'm here with Dr. Iris Freelander, and today we'd like to talk to you about looking for the good. In our lives, it's often very difficult for us in the midst of turbulence and change to see good, but one of the fundamental teachings of metaphysical New Thought philosophy is that there is good in the midst of every circumstance and situation. And even though the circumstance and situation itself or the experience may not appear to be good, that there is great good behind that which we experience and that which we see. In New Thought we say often that there is only good and that good permeates all that really exists in our lives and in the reality of the world. I guess a way, a place to begin is to talk about the fact that in New Thought metaphysical philosophy, we believe that there is a multidimensional world, isn't there? And that's kind of new for some people. Yes, it is new for some people. But when you look at life concretely, you can see that um, good is everywhere. And that which often seems negative or evil is truly good also. So as we go through life, just looking for the negative, that's what we'll find. But if we look for the good, it's almost always there. Mm -hmm. There's a saying in the movement that is look for the good and praise it, yes. which teaches us to really, in our lives, look for good things. And I think that so often in life today, we're surrounded by the news and by changing economic situations and world changes and all of the changes that people tell us are coming about that are going to be negative or that they think are going to be negative. And so to really look for good things uh, is, is a good practice, isn't it? Yes, it is. And it's essential for our mental health. It's essential for our physical health because whatever affects us mentally is going to affect us physically. And it's also essential for good relationships. And so often uh, we allow people to get to us when they're not really being negative, but we're putting the connotation of negativity on it. So if we look for the good as we uh, go through life day to day on a day to day basis, and look for the good, then that's what we're going to find nine times out of ten. Mm -hmm. You touched on a very important uh, area of life, and maybe we should talk a little bit about it. And We were talking before the program a little bit about relationships. And very often, when people are in relationships, either relationships one-on-one -on -one in a, a husband or wife relationship or a an intimate or personal relationship, or relationships between friends and acquaintances, we often do misinterpret what people's <laughs> motives are, don't we? And we try to second guess or, or understand things that uh, sometimes are none of our business. Yes. Yes, that's true. And also, we'll put words in people's mouths that are not really there, which you just uh, touched on, that um, if we are, again, if we're looking for the negative, we can find it. But um, most people aren't out to hurt others, but we often take what they say as if they're trying to hurt us, where if we take it in a positive way, then it lifts and, it, and it, it changes the whole connotation. And perhaps the person who's addressing us might be angry or upset over for any number of reasons, which often doesn't have anything to do with the person they're addressing. They're just impatient. Mm -hmm. And the other issue I think that, that bears remembering or thought is that we don't really know what other people are going through. Exactly. And sometimes we think we do, and especially when we're dealing in relationships with friends or in our household where we think we know people well. Mm -hmm. even, at, even with those whom we know very well, uh, are, are very well acquainted, there is not a real awareness of what the other person is really going through or what has brought them to where they are. Yes, because as you say always, we live in our minds and not in the world. And if we realize the other person is living in their mind and they're going through a lot of, of uh, stuff, as they go through that, they, they, they can't shift very quickly sometimes. And again, it wouldn't have anything to do with, the, uh, with us or with the person they're addressing. So if we could just bear in mind that uh, it's our temperament and our mind that helps us to be happy or sad, helps us to be helpful to others. And very often uh, what a person who's having a tough time of it needs is to just come up on someone who laughs and makes a joke of, of whatever is happening. And they're often grateful for that because they, they, they realize that they've been overwrought. And when we're overwrought, we say things we don't, uh, we don't mean and things that don't even apply. 
Mm -hmm. And I think it's important too for us uh, when we do that to acknowledge it, isn't that? Yes. A, that's a very big plus. Yes, but uh, we would like to, if, if we can always just keep our own consciousness high, then others will be lifted by that. And I know that you've had uh, people say that to you because I've heard people say it to me about you, that just because your attitude is so positive and so up, it lifts them and they are more uh, more able to cope with whatever it is, even if you've not talked with them directly. So uh, if we can remember that that's true always, then we're more thoughtful in what we say to others and, and more very often it's the attitude, it's not the words that hurt, it's the attitude. And if someone is really down and they're hurt about something, then their attitude can't be up unless the people around them w help, helps to lift them. So uh, if we could just always remember that things are not what they seem. <laughs> and we do live in our consciousness, don't we? Yes. As we say, we live in our minds, but our consciousness is that awareness of our being that dwells within. And so often, I think, uh, uh, people have a negative consciousness, and because of their negative consciousness or their negative view of mm -hmm. life, uh, they fail to see good or even comprehend or believe that there's good in, in a certain situation. <laughs> and of course, one of the difficult things things I think for people to do is to see a negative, uh, a, a very uh, uh, seemingly terrible situation and be able to see the good in it. But if we know and understand that in, in everything there is some good, there is mm -hmm. some lesson, there is some strength, there is some overcoming, there is some mission, there is some lesson, there is something that's coming out of every experience that is good and only good. Yes, and when we do remember that, then then life is easier to take. The hard, the hard knocks of life are easier to take because we realize that what you just said is true. Mm -hmm. And so uh, then we don't take all those problems so seriously. We realize this too shall pass. I think it was Eleanor Roosevelt who said that got her through uh, circumstances that were difficult. Mm -hmm. She always remembered this too shall pass. Mm -hmm. And that's always true of everyone in, in their entire life. Mm -hmm. and, uh, but it's so, so often difficult for people to see the good. I, I think uh, maybe we could talk about a couple of things that people could do. I guess the big, the, one of the easiest things is when we see ourselves not seeing the good <laughs> is to stop and to, and to be aware of the fact that, that there's a different way of thinking about this circumstance or situation. Yes, and I think what's most difficult for people is when someone they love is ill, it's hard for them to see the good. But uh, so many people have written about the aftermath of an illness and where they've been, it's been life changing for them in a very positive way. So if we could remember those things where others have really profited through having suffered uh, through an illness, then we can then apply that to the people we know and care for who are, who are presently ill. So often in, in counseling and dealing with people, I've found uh, those especially faced with uh, life-threatening diseases or as we'd call, as some would call terminal illnesses, mm -hmm. who have told me that they didn't know, that they didn't have any idea that they were as strong as they were mm -hmm. until they were faced with this challenge. And the same for family members and, mm -hmm. and loved ones who are around people who have a tremendous health challenge. And it is difficult and we're not at all saying that uh, we should be able to laugh and be happy, <laughs> yeah. certainly in such circumstances. But we are saying that we should go within and assess our, our mind dynamic and weigh how it is we're thinking about this circumstance and situation. And if it's a terminal illness, if it's a loss of a job, if it's limited finances, what if it's the end of a relationship, whatever it is, be willing to look into, look at that experience and be willing to get the good from it. Yes, and transmute. Mm -hmm. We can always transmute what we think is negative into what we feel is good. And as we transmute, then uh, life becomes ever so much more bearable. And also, we affect others because uh, we always say that everything is, is light, everything is vibration and energy. And so the energy we give out will affect other people and if we're giving out total negativity, then that's what that's what people will see. But if we're giving out the negativity that with which we're faced, but we're facing it with gallant, gallantly and um, brightly and with light, then people will see that. And I think more and more people are living that way, don't you? 
I believe so. I think we see more affirmative living today. Yes. And even though some people would certainly argue with us, but then they're <laughs> the people that don't see the good. But there are certainly a lot of people who subscribe to the philosophy that we're sharing, and that is to being able to see, uh, being able to transmute, as you said, a circumstance yes. or situation, and to be able to grow from it. And you know, one of the things we talk about in, in challenge and difficulty and pain and suffering and separation and loss and limit and all of those things and illness is that we not only go through those experiences, but that we each get to grow through them, and we do indeed. Yes, and most people have a spiritual background or a spiritual um, consciousness um, as they go through life. And as that happens, they can really um, gain from that and be sustained by their spirituality. Important issue, and we always talk about this on, on our program, and that is that while we're metaphysicians and, and new thought uh, uh, truth students, we never uh, are, are uh, telling people that they should change their faith. <laughs> exactly. and so every spiritual path is valid, exactly. and I think that's tremendously important. And so as people listen to what we have to say, uh, while we certainly would invite uh, people to have our, our faith, faith belief system, but if they have others, every spiritual pathway is valid and every spiritual pathway can empower people to mm -hmm. overcome the negatives in their life and see good. That's correct. And, when, and people can be inspired by other people's religion too. I mean, we each have our own set of beliefs and some people who are atheists still have their own set of beliefs. But we can gain from the belief and religious um, doctrines of others and uh, that's what we need to do when we're feeling down, when we're feeling, when we don't see good in life, then we need to look further and mm -hmm. look for it and see all that's, um, that God is capable of working out through all the people of all the different religions. And it's a wonderful, wonderful uh, manifestation. Uh, so people really should delve deeply into their own faith. Exactly. And, uh, even as they listen to us and they're trying to understand and comprehend mm -hmm. what we're sharing with them, the thing that we're saying is go back to your faith yes. if that's where you're comfortable yes. and see and draw upon your own faith tradition, upon your own religion, mm -hmm. upon your own church and, uh, and see what it tells you yes. about seeing the good. Yes. I, um, at one time I was very active in a, a, a philanthropic group here in Long Beach where they worked with children and children who had been abused and so uh, there was an, a, a banker who was going to give some money appreciable amount of money to that organization but he asked what kind of spiritual nutriment do you offer those children and their parents and the head of the organization said well we don't offer any we can't because of government funding and he said well I'm sorry I can't um, give money to any group that doesn't have some kind of spiritual nutriment. And when we walked out of there, I'm the one who had asked her to go with me because he had told my husband he would give the money. And I couldn't believe it, that she, that they didn't offer anything spiritual. And she said, well, we can't. And I said, well, you can go with each individual and go back to their roots and see what they liked or didn't like about what they, what they were offered in spiritual nutriment when they were young, and then go from there. And see see where they're coming from, because there's so many different religious beliefs they could embrace. And if they don't like what they had in at the beginning of their life, then find find one that they do. Mm -hmm. And then you don't have to take them to churches. You can just help them there. But everyone needs a spiritual nucleus, a spiritual um, base from which to operate, don't they? They do. And we need a spiritual understanding of, of tolerance and uh, and embracing diversity so that we can see the good in other faiths. <laughs> exactly. And of course, that's the exact kind of tolerance and understanding that we need. And fundamentally, seeing the good in everything mm -hmm. means even seeing the good in other people's faith traditions. Yes, it does. And, and you know, there is so much good in all of them. It's just like in the West here, we didn't meditate. And now so many people meditate to great advantage. Mm -hmm. And um, there's so much we can gain from all the different religions that it's amazing to me that anyone would have an aversion to ever studying or finding out what these other religions offer because they offer so much that we can use. Absolutely. And we can see that, in fact, just as we've been discussing, good is everywhere in the midst of religion, in the midst of life, and in the midst of every circumstance and situation. We'd like to pause at this point in the program and offer you the opportunity to receive some literature so that you can continue your study of the concepts and ideas that we're sharing. 
would like to give you the opportunity to explore and discover in your own home the new thought teachings that this program is sharing with you by sending you a free copy of one of these booklets. Simply address your request to Confident Living at P.O. Box 7726, Long Beach, California, 90807. Whatever your dream, whatever your vision, you can reach it through Confident Living. Just before the break, we were talking about the good in religion and the good everywhere that we're, that we're discussing today. Uh, I guess one of the last half of the program, we should talk a little bit about this fundamental belief uh, of whether humankind, or we used to say men, mankind, but whether or not humankind is good or evil. <laughs> and uh, we, of course, hold the belief that people uh, of all kinds and of all nationalities and of all persuasions, people as creations and children of God and created in the likeness and image of God are all good by nature. Now yeah. that's kind of earth shattering for some people, <laughs> isn't it? Well, it might be, but it would be very foolish to negate that because obviously it's true. And we read about and hear on TV of those who watch TV very much and watch the news, always all you see in the papers and in the media as a whole almost all is, is the bad things, the negative things. And of course, with all the millions and millions of people in the world, there's going to be a lot of bad things happen. And a lot of bad things inadvertently happen. A lot, of, a lot happen because people are misguided and they do terrible things. But that's such a minute amount of people involved when you look at all the people in the world. So overall, people are good. And overall, people and those who are not have, real, have really serious problems. But uh, when we realize the goodness of mankind is so much more prevalent than the evil or the negativity, then it, it gives us more hope and, and also more courage. But also it makes us uh, realize that there's always the balance of good versus evil, negativity versus uh, good, and light versus darkness. And so it's just an, it's a given. And sure, we're not saying that, uh, well, we accept it and it's, it's okay. Of course it's not okay, but it's to be expected and it's part of life. It's part of the balance, and uh, but by nature, we are good. Yeah. And as Buckminster Fuller said, uh, uh, some of us are just less damaged than others. <laughs> and of course, the people who do the bad things or the things that we would call evil or create the difficulties in life, the, the monumental difficulties of life, such as taking human life and committing crimes and uh, violence and abuse and the like, uh, all have had some form of damage mm -hmm. in their life. And I think it's important for us to understand that. Uh, it's important for us to understand when we look at our parents. You know, one of the things as we talk to people, uh, most of us, or many of us, have good remembrances of our childhood and our parents, but many people don't. <laughs> and it's so often difficult for people to overlook the behavior of parents. But in so, in so many cases, parents are doing the very best that they can. Now, the best that they can may not be what they ought to be doing. But the fact is, is that each person that behaves in an inappropriate way or any person who is negative or violent or causes uh, difficulty in life for themselves or others have been brought to that point through a variety of experiences, mm -hmm. through a sequence of events that have brought them to where they are. But when they came into this life, we all came in in the same way as these wonderful little babies, innocent and good and true. And our conditioning as we come through childhood and adolescence and into adulthood uh, determines the kind of person that we are. And so by nature, though, our nature and at our core is good and only good. And I think that's an important thing to remember. Yes, it is. And if we, if we do remember that, then we, can, we don't condone uh, things that people do that are not good, but we can understand that it's part of life and it's a part of their life. And, um, and, and we can send light and energy out to them. And you know, that goes a long way. When we send negativity back, it's not um, it's not productive. But when we send light and love and energy back, then it is productive, and it does change the energy around the person that we're sending it to, and they do change. For, uh, for the good. And this issue of vibration is tremendously important and fundamental to, to metaphysical and new thought teaching. And that is that when we think, when we act, when we behave, all of life is, is creating vibration. 
And uh, I think for many of our listeners or viewers, that's a, a different and new concept. Mm -hmm. But the idea is that vibration is a reality that emits from each and every one of us. And when we send out positive vibrations, or as people say in, in the contemporary, the vibes, but mm -hmm. the vibrations, then uh, we do change uh, the environment. And we can change other people's negativity for the good by embracing and sending, as you said so well, sending the light, sending the, the vibration vibrations of affirmation, of healing, of strength, of reformation, of transformation from what they are uh, to what they really uh, need to be and what they really are in, in truth. Yes, and I, I think you agree with me that there's more good in the world than ever before. We, it's a, life is an upward spiral, it seems, and more and more people are seeing light filled days and nights. More and more people are sending out deliberately and many are doing it just be, just by the way they live. They're, they're sending light and love and energy out wherever. It's just like when people prepare meals. Some, meal, some people will prepare a meal and all they're doing is throwing the food together. And maybe perhaps they're even doing gourmet type cooking, but it's still they're, they're not creating, they're not creating that meal with love. And when we do create with love, it really makes a difference when the people eat it. Because everything, as you said, is vibration, and so it creates a different kind of vibration mm -hmm. in, in the food that's, that's consumed. Absolutely. In the food that's consumed, in the environment, in the house that we live in, in the offices where we work, mm -hmm. in the schools where children study, in the streets, in the mm -hmm. grocery store, all of these places are really constantly absorbing the vibrations mm -hmm. uh, that are, are in that area. And that, then those vibrations can be always made to be good and positive. Yes, and we can remember we're really doing God's work when we do send out, when we deliberately stay positive and light-filled and send this love and energy out. Mm -hmm. And more and more people are praying in their churches and in their homes in that way of knowing that they're sending light and love and energy and doing it deliberately. And it wouldn't matter if they're just doing it inadvertently or doing it deliberately. They're still creating it. So more and more people are deliberately doing it, so more are. Mm -hmm. And isn't it a wonderful thing to know that we are evolving upward we, we are doing better in our lives, mankind as a whole. And sure, there's so much turmoil in the world, but still, there's always been turmoil in the world. And uh, the issue, too, of visualization, mm -hmm. I think, is, is a tremendous technique. And, of course, we use it a lot in New Thought. Uh, but visualizing, especially uh, troublesome people mm -hmm. or, or troublesome situations, to visualize is to create a vibration and to create an image in mind that projects. Mm -hmm. And that can change uh, a person and can change a circumstance, can't it? Oh, yes. It can change total conditions. And it can change, um, I'm sure it's won wars. <laughs> I'm sure it's won uh, countries. It's helped on a countrywide level. It's, um, and, and again, don't you think that more and more people are living the life in that way? I believe they are. And I think that uh, what you said a few minutes ago, that the world is better now, that mm -hmm. there's more good in mm -hmm. the world than there has ever been, may be a startling thing for people, some of our viewers. But uh, the fact is that we listen so often mm -hmm. to, uh, to the news and mm -hmm. the newspapers and to our negative friends. But in fact, when we look at the world and the conditions that we have and the, and the quality of life that we have, uh, wonderful things are happening. And certainly there are, are areas of need, but what we're talking about is changing yeah. those uh, areas of need, both physical and psychological and, and emotional, uh, transmuting them, as you said so well yeah. in the beginning of the program, into great good. Mm -hmm. uh, it was Nora Brooks, the foundress of Divine Science, a wonderful religious movement that uh, uh, that we don't see much anymore, but Divine uh, Nora Brooks uh, was one who said, uh, praise God, that good is everywhere. And she was was really a person who taught this concept that good is everywhere and that if we praise that and if we embrace that and if we if we create that that it goes forth in a wonderful way to unite with the presence and power of God which is good and only good and then this entire world as we know it both the physical world and and the the spiritual world and the and the uh, mental worlds mm -hmm. can be transmuted into uh, what they really are at their core and that's that is good mm -hmm. there's there's a song that um what you just said a moment praise god that good is everywhere mm -hmm. praise to the love we all may share mm -hmm. the life that thrills in you and me 
praise to the force that sets us free. And, you know, we could say that to ourselves, and I'm sure that people go around saying similar things, but that's a very wonderful mantra, isn't it? It, it is. It is a tremendous, uh, tremendous mantra, tremendous affirmation. And, of course, one of the things that we use in New Thought a lot is affirmations. Mm -hmm. And, of course, a simple affirmation like that, uh, praise God that good is everywhere, mm -hmm. is, uh, is a wonderful way of centering ourselves when we see, uh, uh, when the appearances of life bring us the belief that things are not good. That's right. And we know that as we say an affirmation, we, we're creating light and light is surrounding us. So uh, those uh, people who might, who are hearing us, who are having problems in their life, might just start saying affirmations and um, being positive in their approach toward every, toward every aspect of life and seeing the good. Mm -hmm. Seeing the good in the midst of everything. Yes. And I, I think that the beginning point for everyone is to examine the way that their minds operate and what it is that they see. If they see more bad or more evil in the world, and if they're surrounded by people who are constantly talking about how awful it is and how terrible <laughs> things are, then they need to change their way of thinking. And they also maybe need to change their surroundings yes. and change the people uh, that are influencing them mm -hmm. and look for and embrace people who are positive and who are affirmative and who see the good in circumstances mm -hmm. and situations. Mm -hmm. that's, a, uh, that's a very good thought that m most people are afraid to change their environment, afraid to, afraid to change the people that they're seeing, but they don't have to drop friends entirely who are, who are negative. They can just see them less. Mm -hmm. And also if we, if, and then they might uh, have a good effect on that person. So they wouldn't want to just drop that in, entirely. But we have to plan our lives and, and live it. Create a plan and live that plan. And as we do that, we need to raise our consciousness and send forth ideas and thoughts that are always positive and always affirmative. And as you were just mentioning, sometimes we aren't able to leave the friends, and we ought not to, and mm -hmm. certainly in families we don't leave our families, <laughs> but we can certainly enfold them in the power and the presence of good and see good in the midst of every circumstance and situation. And during this half hour, we've been sharing with you concepts and ideas about seeing the good in life. And we hope that you found these ideas interesting, and we look forward to seeing you next time. Mm -hmm.